Hey everyone, I'm Sarah and this is Courageous Color. How many of you have seen those hypnotizing videos with a cup of layered paint flipped over and then swirled around to create a beautiful flowing design? It's oddly satisfying, isn't it? So those videos are demonstrating acrylic pouring. And at one point I was just as curious as you are to figure out why people make that and how it's done. So I took an art class in Englewood, Florida at an art center and I've been practicing this technique for a couple of years now. You may have enjoyed watching some of my YouTube shorts and just seeing some of the things that I have created and come up with. Uh, so today I'm going to cover the topic of acrylic pouring. I'll tell you what it is, why people make it and how it's done. So let's get into it. What is acrylic pouring? Well, according to leftbrainartist.com, acrylic pouring is a technique used to create paintings with natural flowy patterns. So that's pretty cool. So why are we creating this art? Well, there are many reasons. Uh, some folks create art for entertainment, as a hobby, to learn a new skill. But I think there's a deeper meaning to it. I think there is a desire to create. Emily P. Freeman said in her book, A Million Little Ways, we don't have to be afraid of desire. It's time instead to wake up to it. In the waking, maybe we will begin to see that instead of principles to follow, life is more like a rhythm to move with. I really love that quote for this because there is sort of a rhythm to making this type of art and I'll demonstrate that um, in just a few minutes. So who can make this art? Well, pretty much anybody. Ben Franklin once famously quoted, you can do anything you set your mind to, and millions of people have said it since. In Stephen Pressfield's book, Turning Pro, uh, he talks about ambition. So it takes desire and ambition to make anything that's creative, whether you're writing a book or making a painting or doing a fun, simple, really fast type of painting like acrylic pouring. And Stephen Pressfield says, ambition, I have come to believe, is the most primal and sacred fundament of our being. To feel ambition and to act upon it is to embrace the unique calling of our souls. So how is acrylic pouring made? Well, unlike traditional paint and brush type of paintings, um, acrylic pouring uses paint like this and additives like these and then it's poured directly on the canvas. So the next thing we're gonna do is go through the supplies we have here and then do a little demonstration. So I have stirring sticks, I have small cups and a big cup, so we can do the flip cup method. I have a canvas here and it is in a tray, just for spillage. Um, I've put four thumbtacks on the back here so it can sit a little higher and just be raised up in the tray. And in that case, um, if the paint goes over the edges, <clears throat> it will, you know, be in the tray and not all over the table. So you definitely, you could use a box if you don't have a tray like this one. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is put some of our paint. We'll use some bright colors for this. We'll put, we'll get about four paint colors. Just put a little bit of paint in each cup. I think you can see that. And then I'll show you how to mix in the additives and create one of these paintings. It's fairly quick. There we go. I'm going to use some pink. So the first additive that we want to put in our, all right, so we have blue, we've got some magenta pink color, we've got yellow, and we've got orange. Right now, the paints are pretty thick. If we tried to pour them on the canvas, that wouldn't work. So the first additive we're going to put in is called Floetrol. So we have Floetrol, we have silicone oil, we have WD-40, and we have isopropyl alcohol. So the first 
additive is Floetrol. I'm gonna fill the cup about halfway with that. There we go, we got one more. Perfect. And then we're gonna stir that around. And even though the Floetrol is white, it really doesn't lighten the color at all. It just makes it real flowy and drippy like that. So we'll mix up each one. Get that. And then we'll add some of these other additives. So the Floetrol, the purpose of the Floetrol is basically to make the paint real flowy so you can pour it directly on the canvas. <clears throat> The other additives create what are called cells in the painting. So I'll show you, I'll show you an example of another one that I've done. Let's see. So like this one here, you can see all these little circles and ovals and little patterns in there. And so those are what are called cells. And those are made from some of these other additives like the silicone oil and the um, isopropyl alcohol. Basically, as it dries, it kind of opens up these cells and shows you the different colors that are underneath. And that's the reason that we layer the big cup full of the pink colors that we chose. So you kind of get these layers and mixtures of different colors. Mix up the pink. And then the second, <clears throat> the second additive we're going to use is going to be the silicone oil. doing some research um, I found on kbecca.com the author on there her name's Kristen she recommends four drops of silicone oil per paint color this one's not really dropping it's kind of squeezing but there's four and then um, the reason that I do the flow trial first is because it makes the paint real easy to move the reason I do the silicone oil second is because you can pretty much mix it in as much as you need to. And the agitation is not gonna bother the silicone oil very much. It's just gonna continue to mix in. And if you do that with the isopropyl alcohol, you're gonna have, um, you're gonna have a little bit of a problem because it's not going to stick in the paint the way it would if you just stirred it one or two times. So we're working on mixing in the silicone oil now. There we go. I'm going to use the isopropyl alcohol. Basically, I don't have an eyedropper, but normally that's what I would use. We're going to just drop in a couple drops using the cap. And then, like I said, we don't want to stir the alcohol in too, too much. So give it a couple of little twirls. I kind of want it to sit on top of the paint and just mix in naturally instead of being uh, agitated too, too much. So we got that going on. Alright, and last is our WD-40. First thing I'm going to do is just spray that into the cup here. Oh, it doesn't want to spray into the cup. There it goes. All right, leave that over there. And I'll just pour a little bit into each one of my paints. Okay. And give it one more little stir for each color. We got the orange, the blue, the pink, and the yellow. paper towels here that I can lay the stirring sticks on and then <clears throat> basically what we're gonna do is just layer the paint in this big cup so I can show you the flip cup method and you can pretty much layer it however you want so we started with some really thick paint and now we've got this really loose kind of concoction over here. And 
just sort of in the back of your mind, you have to understand that whatever color you're putting in last is going to be first on the canvas. And then whatever color you've put in first is going to be your top layer, even though they do mix around quite a bit once they're in there. So we have this cup that is all sorts of layered with all of our different colors. We have a full cup of paint. We're not just going to pour it over. You're going to take the canvas, put it in your hand, put that over the cup, and then flip it over like this. All right. Put that down in our tray. And then, once the paint completely fills the rim of the cup, you can lift it up and start to manipulate. So the four steps in creating an acrylic pouring painting are to select your paints and your additives, then mix them, pour them, and manipulate. So select, mix, pour, and manipulate. I'm gonna lift that up. And you can see here that we have a circle. We can kind of pour this this way and that way. We'll turn it around. And we'll kind of just cover the whole canvas, just like that. All right. And then you see there's a design sort of emerging there. Now that I've shown you what acrylic pouring is, why it's made and how it's done, I'll leave you with this. If you're looking for a new way to create art or a new way to express yourself, acrylic pouring is a great technique to try. All you need to do is grab some supplies and get started.